Eric Thompson froze in front of the massive glass doors of the Imperial Hotel. His heart pounded in his chest, and his palms were sweaty with slight nervousness. This moment was supposed to be a major step in his career, but something unsettled him. He glanced up at the hotel's facade, luxurious and pompous, like it belonged to a different world, a world he had always struggled to enter, despite his successes. But today, everything was supposed to change. His suit fit perfectly, his wristwatch was expensive, and his briefcase was new, stylishly complementing his image as a confident entrepreneur. Yet, even so, something in the air reminded him of old wounds that seemed long healed. However, he decided to push those feelings aside. Business is business, and his opportunities shouldn't be determined by the color of his skin. He gritted his teeth and resolutely stepped inside. The hotel's lobby looked like something out of a magazine, gleaming marble floors, crystal chandeliers, and soft lighting reflecting off the gold and silver accents. The entire interior practically screamed wealth and exclusivity, and this place was meant to be the launching point for his new project. His meeting with investors was scheduled for tomorrow, and Eric planned to spend the evening preparing. But with each step toward the reception desk, his confidence seemed to slowly evaporate. He felt the stares. Strangers, hotel guests, glanced at him. At first, indifferently, but then something in their looks shifted, as if they noticed his difference. Eric was used to this. It had been part of his reality since childhood. But now, standing in this lobby, that feeling hit him with renewed force. He wasn't supposed to be here. That's what those silent gazes were saying. He crossed the room and approached the reception desk, where a young man in a perfectly pressed suit stood. His appearance was as impeccable as everything around him. The man gave Eric a quick glance, showing no emotion, and offered a brief nod. Good evening, Eric said, trying to hide the tension in his voice. I have a reservation under the name Thompson. The receptionist mindlessly tapped on the keyboard, not even looking at Eric. His face was impassive, like a mask. Thompson, he repeated with slight doubt, but Eric paid no attention to the tone. Yes, Eric answered confidently. The reservation is confirmed. The man glanced at the screen, then his eyes slid back to Eric, this time lingering a bit longer with a faint shadow of skepticism. An awkward tension filled the air. Seconds felt like minutes as the receptionist continued to silently search for his reservation. I'm sorry, the man finally said, lifting his eyes, but I don't see your reservation. For a moment, Eric was speechless. He was certain everything had been booked in advance. This hotel wasn't chosen at random, and every detail of this trip had been meticulously planned. That's impossible. His voice remained calm, but inside, a wave of indignation was building. My reservation was confirmed. I can show you the documents. He reached for his pocket, pulling out his phone to open the confirmation email. The receptionist glanced at the phone, but didn't move. There's nothing we can do he said coldly, as if reciting a rehearsed line. We have no record of your reservation. We can't accommodate you. Eric felt the blood rush to his face. His throat went dry. This man wasn't even going to check properly. He had simply decided that Eric didn't belong in this hotel, and with a smirk, was now throwing him out. Eric had encountered this kind of treatment before, but not here, not now. Listen, Eric's voice trembled slightly with restrained anger. This is clearly a mistake. I paid for the room. I have all the documents. You need to at least check again. The receptionist continued to stare at him with icy indifference. It was as if none of this mattered to him at all. I told you, we don't have your reservation. He repeated slowly and clearly, as if Eric were a child who needed something explained in simple terms. And we don't have any available rooms. Please leave the hotel. At that moment, Eric felt the world around him narrow. The receptionist's words struck his pride, forcing him to remember all the moments from his past when he had been ignored or belittled because of the color of his skin. He took a deep breath, trying to contain the anger that was ready to burst out. Raising his voice uh, or causing a scene would only make the situation worse, but inside, he was seething. Around him, the whispers started again. Passers-by in the lobby, well-dressed men and women, the same ones whose glances had brushed him with light disdain, were now watching him as if he were some kind of spectacle. They saw him being humiliated, but no one was going to intervene. 
In their eyes, it was clear. He doesn't belong here. Eric clenched his fists, feeling cold sweat on his palms. At that moment, he could have turned around, left, and forgotten the whole thing like a bad dream. But no, something else was growing inside him. Not just anger, but determination. The determination not to let this situation define him. He slowly put his phone back in his pocket and looked the receptionist directly in the eyes. This wasn't the look of someone defeated. It was the look of someone who had made a decision. You didn't even check, Eric said quietly, but there was steel in his voice. And you didn't try, because it doesn't matter to you. But know this, this isn't over. The receptionist froze slightly, his face changing for just a moment. Eric caught that brief flicker of uncertainty, but it no longer interested him. He turned and with his head held high, walked toward the exit. Each step echoed in his mind. This wasn't a defeat, it was the beginning of something bigger. When he stepped outside and breathed in the cool evening air, his mind was already clear on what to do next. This hotel, these people, and their prejudice wouldn't break him. No, he would make sure that this day marked the start of his victory. The Shinchitsan Imperial would soon know who Eric Thompson was. And at that moment, the plan that would change everything was born inside him. A month had passed. The night Eric Thompson left the Imperial Hotel, he felt humiliation and anger. But now, standing in front of its doors again, he was a completely different person. The night they refused to serve him had been a turning point, not just for him, but for everything this hotel represented. Today, he stood here as the new owner. The Imperial Hotel, one of the most luxurious in the city, had long been a symbol of wealth and exclusivity, inaccessible to ordinary people, especially to those like him. But now, it belonged to him. Yet, it wasn't about revenge. Eric wasn't someone who wasted time on empty grudges. Instead, he had conceived something bigger, something that would transform this symbol of privilege into something entirely new. He didn't just want to defeat the system, he wanted to change it. As he walked past the same reception desk, where they had coldly and contemptuously turned him away a month ago, Eric barely looked at the receptionist. The man stood there, but his eyes no longer held that same arrogance. He knew the world had changed. His once scornful and superior expression was now dull and haunted. Word had spread quickly. The new owner was the very person they had so easily dismissed. And now, this man had come to change the rules of the game. Eric paused for a moment before entering the press conference room. Around him were cameras, journalists, and hotel staff. All that luxury, which had seemed so unreachable and cold a month ago, now belonged to him. But he was about to do something more than just relish his victory. His presence, his confident stride, and his calm yet firm expression made everyone freeze. They all understood that something important was about to happen. Eric stepped onto the small stage set up for the event and took the microphone in hand. Every gaze was fixed on him. A month ago, I came here like any other guest, he began. His voice was deep and confident, but there was an undercurrent of power. I paid for a room, just like any other person. But they refused me. Not because there weren't any rooms, but because they decided that I didn't fit their idea of who should be here. Eric paused, scanning the room. The journalists whispered nervously, and the receptionist behind the desk looked like he wanted to disappear into the ground. Eric continued, but what makes this moment important isn't the act of discrimination itself. It's that this hotel, like so many others, became a symbol of privilege, accessible only to the few. It became a place where people like me were seen as outsiders, as unworthy. But I'm not here for revenge. These words made everyone freeze. Eric spoke as if everyone in the room were part of his struggle. His words cut through the air, filling the space with tension. Cameras zoomed in on him, microphones were aimed at him, and the journalists sat, ready to capture every word. I didn't buy this hotel to prove myself right, Eric continued, his voice now softer but even more impactful. I bought it to change its essence. This hotel will no longer be a symbol of exclusivity. From today, the Imperial will become a shelter for those with nowhere to go. For those who have lost their homes, but haven't lost hope. The murmur in the room grew louder. 
Journalists frantically jotted down his words, and the reaction from the audience made it clear that no one had expected this turn. Eric looked out at the crowd, his eyes searching for the faces of those who had always been on the margins, those who knew what it meant to feel like an outsider in their own city. The homeless, the lonely, the ones you don't notice as you walk down the street, they deserve no less than those who used to stay here, Eric continued. Today, the Imperial will no longer be a symbol of luxury, it will be a symbol of hope. The words, symbol of hope, hung in the air like a veil, covering everyone present. No one could remain indifferent. This was more than just a statement, it was a challenge to the old order. Eric knew that many in the room had expected something different from him, revenge, pride, punishment for those who had insulted him, but he offered something better, real change. When the press conference ended, Eric stepped down from the stage and headed for the exit, but on the way, he was stopped by that very receptionist who had refused to help him a month ago. The man's face was pale, his eyes lost. He looked like someone who had suddenly realized he was on the edge of a cliff. Mr. Thompson, the receptionist's voice trembled as he stopped Eric. I, I wanted to apologize for what happened that day. I, I was wrong. Eric looked at him. The receptionist's eyes were filled with fear and regret. This was the moment when a person faces the consequences of their actions and realizes the world would never be the same again. Eric paused for a moment. This could have been his moment of triumph, a moment to say something that would be forever etched in this man's memory. But instead, he quietly said, apologies won't bring back those you've turned away, but actions can change the world. The receptionist nodded, unsure of what to say. He knew he could no longer hide behind his position, behind a system that had long protected him. Since then, time had passed and the Imperial had truly changed. Eric didn't just change the hotel, he changed the approach. He brought in local charitable organizations, created support and rehabilitation programs for the homeless. What had once been an exclusive oasis for the privileged had now become a refuge for those who needed help the most. Journalists continued to write about it. People discussed his actions, but for Eric, the headlines weren't the most important thing. He saw the hotel filled with new faces, new stories. He knew he had made the right choice. This triumph wasn't a personal victory. It was a victory for everyone the system had rejected. Every time he visited the hotel, he saw people who had once been denied the very basics, a home, warmth, hope. And now they found it here at the Imperial. His dream had come true and it was far more significant than he could have ever imagined.